Hi, I am Dr. Sakiman Sur, and uh, let's discuss carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, this is the most common nerve entrapment in the body. And uh, here you could see this is the carpal tunnel, and this is bounded posteriorly by the carpal tunnel and anteriorly by the this um, flexor retinaculum. These are the various structures. Let's discuss. The carpal bones are eight small bones constituting the wrist. These are the laid out in two rows proximal in the distal where four bones lie in each row. This positioning of the carpal bones makes a deep concave groove on the ventral aspect of the wrist. The groove is roofed over by a firm ligamentous band called the flexor retinaculum, thus constituting the osseofacial carpal tunnel. This is the you could see this is the ligament, which is also called as the uh, transverse uh, ligament of the wrist and uh, this uh, flexor retinaculum. For several flexor tendons in the median nerve are conveyed into the hand through the carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel syndrome results due to the compression of this tunnel space or trauma to the contents of the tunnel. A useful mnemonic for each um, uh, remembering the carpal bones is that she looks too pretty, try to catch her. Whereas these first letter of each word of mnemonic denotes first letter of each of the carpal bone arranged by row, the proximal row first, and the, from the lateral to the medial side, like this is scaphoid, L, lunate, etc., etc. And the nine tendons in the median uh, from medial to lateral side pass through this. You could see this first of all. This is the, uh, you know, the carpal tunnel. These are the four superficial tendons, flexor digitorum superficialis. Uh, these are the flow of four profundus, flexor digitorum profundus tendons. And uh, this is flexor pollicis longus tendon. These are the nine tendons passing deep to the flexor retinaculum, the carpal tunnel. And this is the median, uh, right? So this is the flexor pollicis longus passing through this under the carpal ligament. This is the transverse carpal ligament. And this is outside the, car, the and this uh, our um, uh, contents the, being discussed, the carpal tunnel, this flexor carpi, TDLS, outside the carpal tunnel. So this is the um, thing. This is another picture, right? You could see this. These steric pairing structures are the structures present in the carpal tunnel, right? You can see and correlate. The median nerve travels deep to the flexor retinaculum where it lies between the flexor digitorum superficialis tendon dedicated to the middle finger and the flexor radi carpi radialis tendon. This is the flexor carpi radialis and this is the flexor digitorum superficialis tendon dedicated to the middle finger and this is the median nerve present between them. The median nerve is a minor motor nerve to the intrinsic muscle of the hand and splice, the three muscles of the thinner eminence, the first two umbilicals. All the other intrinsic muscles of the hand are innervated by the ulnar nerve. So the syndrome, carpal tunnel syndrome, what is that? Let's discuss in detail. Carpal tunnel syndrome is an entrapment neuropathy. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a result of any lesion that remarkably decreases the size of the carpal tunnel or more often enhances the size or few of the nine structures or their coverings that travel through, for example, synovial sheaths, inflammation. Here you could see this. Either the size of the tunnel is decreased or the synovial tendon with their sheaths are inflamed. So symptoms. Burning, tingling, and pain in the distribution of the median nerve at start most bothersome while sleeping. Late weakness or atrophy of the muscles, particular of the thinar eminence, can be a result of the repetitive activities at the wrist, usually observed during pregnancy and in patients having diabetes mellitus or the rheumatoid arthritis. A familial type of CTS where no etiological factor can be determined. You could see this is the sensory changes. The lateral three and a half fingers are having sensory area of pain and numbness. These are the motor changes, atrophy of the thinar eminence. So syndrome continues progressive loss of strength and coordination of the thumb due to the weakness of the opponent's pollicis and abductor pollicis brevis can take place at 
if the cause of the compression persists. Patient having carpal tunnel syndrome cannot oppose their thumb and face difficulty in buttoning a shirt or blouse as um, well as in gripping objects such as comb. Right? You could see this. This is the inability to oppose. A with the progression of the condition, the sensory changes can get radiated into the forearm, forearm and the axilla. We know the sensitive structure present in the tunnel is a median nerve. The nerve has two terminal sensory branches supplying the skin of the hand. For this reason, tingling, the paresthesia, diminished sensation, hyperesthesia, or absence of sensation, and anesthesia can take place in the lateral three and a half digits. The palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve takes origin proximal to and it does not travel through the carpal tunnel. Thus, it is while sensation in the center of the palm remains unaffected. Besides, the median nerve has one terminal motor branch called the recurrent branch which supplies the three tenor muscles. I've shown you these sensory changes in the lateral three and a half digits. You could see emission of the tenor eminence, thumb adducted and extended, the simian or the ape-like hand. These are the late symptoms, the motor symptoms. So the carpal tunnel syndrome continues. Symptoms of the compression can be reproduced by compressing the median nerve with our finger at the wrist for about 30 seconds. To relieve both compression and resulting symptoms, complete or partial surgical domain of the flexor retinaculum may be necessary. This procedure is called carpal tunnel release. The incision for this release is carried out toward the medial side of the wrist and flexor retinaculum to prevent possible injury to the recurrent branch of the median nerve. So the clinical findings, very interesting. First of all, is the tunnel or phelan sign can be positive. A tunnel sign is a tingling sensation or feeling of shock-like pain on the volar wrist percussion. A phelan sign is paresthesia or pain in the median nerve distribution when the both wrists of the patient are flexed to 90 degrees for one minute. You could see this is the flexion of the wrist 90 degrees, both the sides, and this is the phelan test basis. The carpal compression test in which tingling and numbness are elicited by direct application of pressure over carpal tunnel can be more specific and sensitive than the fill and antennal test. Muscle weakness or atrophy, particularly of tenor eminence, may develop later than the sensory disturbances as the compression of the nerve worsens. So, clinical findings in the imaging, ultrasound can show flattening of the median nerve underneath the flexor retinaculum and the specific tests of nerve conduction studies and electromyography exhibit evidence of sensory conduction delay prior to motor delay which occurs in several cases. Treatment, what is that? It is aimed at relief of pressure on the median nerve. When cause of bleeding is found out that it is treated appropriately otherwise patients must modify their hand activities. The wrist affected with CTS may be splinted in the neutral position for a period of up to three months. So, non steroidal anti inflammatory uh, drugs or oral corticosteroids may also be tried. Methylprednisolone injections were found to be more effective at 10 weeks than placebo, but the ben benefits decreased by one year. So the carpal tunnel release surgery is beneficial when the patient shows a positive electrodiagnostic test. Surgery can be performed with an open approach or when an endoscopic, both giving similar good improvements. Thank you very much. And uh, please, if you like my channel, do subscribe. Thank you very much.